Okay. So this is a Simmons uh, number 13 in a uh, champion tooth pattern or a tuttle tooth. Um, I think it's champion tooth. I think the tuttle tooths are a little bit like more squat. These are kind of more almond shaped, but um, Gotta go over some stuff here uh, with this. Um, I've been reading a lot um, from a guy named Jim Thode. Uh, he's put out a ton of great stuff on filing. Um, and I had uh, <clears throat> talked to Jim Taylor a little bit about saw filing. Uh, and that's, uh, it was a pretty interesting conversation. He kind of reinforced a lot of the things I've been seeing on the internet too. Um, I went through and I was pointing up the teeth. I was gonna leave these rakers square. Um, they, they have a teensy bit of flair to them already, so I'm just, I might just leave them here, see where they're at, file them down a little bit more, because I need to drop the, <coughs> uh, rakers, I, I, I just hadn't done that yet. Um, but I started pointing up the teeth, the teeth on this one, I am having a, uh, fleam angle of 45 this way um and then my rake angle um like this right now is about 30. um i'm gonna leave it there for now um if the edge is a little bit weak in hardwood i might add a slight secondary bevel to it but i'm gonna i'm gonna keep this for right now the rake is about 30. oh thank you yeah yellow ball there you go good job um you're welcome um <clears throat> so the rake angle is about 30 um but i don't have it perfectly straight here um you can see there's just uh, this one's pretty straight actually it's that's a bad example um on some of these they're a little bit rounded uh from tip to bottom through here um I'm gonna keep it that way. I don't need it to be uh, perfectly flat. I think this one's this one's a decent example through there. Um, it's got a little bit more round to it. Um, some of these teeth weren't in the best condition when I first started, um, but they're shaping up. I veed out the rakers a bit more. I might swage them a little bit now um, and then file the top of the raker to about a 15 degree angle. Um, I don't have a sloped Anderson gauge, um, but I'm just going to kind of eye it um, and check, eye and check, eye and check um, with my pin gauge um, that I'm at my right height. I'm going to start at about 0 0.012 uh, for raker depth and then set. Um, this is a crescent ground saw, so I probably don't need a ton of set here um, to get this going in the wood. I'm targeting it a little bit more towards softwood, but I should be able to handle some hardwood. This is gonna be kind of like a little trail saw uh, for myself and our others. <clears throat> um, so this set um, might be 0.08, um, or I might take it out 0.015. Uh, that's what has been on some other things, on, on a flat ground saw that I have. But this is crescent ground, so you don't need as much set. So. Uh, I'll play with it. I'll see how it cuts with this. I, I actually don't know what it's set at right now. Um, it's it's not a lot. Um, coming over the top of it through here, it's it's pretty minimal. Um, through here, uh, <clears throat> I, gotta, I gotta go through and check it. Um, I have some dial gauges coming, which I'm gonna make some uh, raker depth dial indicator. Um, that goes down to the 0 .001 it reads, and then has a one inch travel on the dial gauge. I'm gonna make a raker depth gauge and then a dial set gauge out of some angle iron or some T-section iron. Um, uh, Jim Thode uh, put out some pictures on kind of how to do that, and I, I find that interesting. And it's gonna make it so I don't have to own a billion different spider gauges and or have a bunch of uh, raker gauges, like this little Atkins uh, through here. Um, this one's set to 0 0.012, but fiddling with these and resetting these is, is a lot. 
Um, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'll probably uh, have some videos maybe filing and then maybe test cutting with this. But it's been fun so far. I think I've caught the filing bug uh, and we'll continue with it. I'm gonna play with my daughter here. You guys have a good one.